hello, hello. I'm Janice and I hope you're all doing well. I am super excited about today's video. It's been a while since I did that massive Filipino food tour video. And I remember when I made that video, I got a lot of comments saying that there was one particular restaurant that I didn't visit, but I absolutely should have. And in this segment of today's video, that is where I went. Okay, so we've just put in our order and in today's video, I actually have a friend helping me eat and also telling me all about what we're about to eat. He also has a YouTube channel that I really like. It is... What is up guys? My name is Raph. <laughs> and I will link his channel, his Instagram, everything in my description. Go check it out. So we have three dishes today. We have the pork sisig, we have the beef kare kare and also the pork... Sinigang. The Port Synagogue. So this is a pork tamarind broth. This reminds me of like broths we get at Chinese restaurants. Okay, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> Ooh, it's a bit sour. Sour, yeah. Yeah. But can you like taste the umami in that too? Yeah. It's very appetizing. It's got that sour flavor. Fun fact, uh, Sinigang is my favorite Filipino. Is it? Yeah. The most common Sinigang in the Philippines is Sinigang. But I normally prefer beef. Only because right. like when you cook with beef uh, or Sinigang, like, you get like a deeper umami. It's very hearty. It's a great winter's meal, I think. You can put yeah. some in there, bok choy. That will work. This one's got bok choy. Do you like bok I do. I like everything. I like everything except durian. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just saying. You know how like I, th I feel like soups are more like winter, but because it's a bit sour, it's okay for summer as well. Exactly. Now we're gonna try the sisig. This is the pork sisig. There was an egg yolk, like a runny one, and then we mixed it when it arrived. For the pork sisig, we are having it with garlic rice. So this has pork jiao, cooked three times. That's correct. Yeah. I was just repeating what you told me. I'm pretty sure there's um, some sort of like liver pate or something similar that we used to give it a extra umami and creaminess. creaminess. Yeah. Ooh, this is a bit spicy. I mean, it's not super creamy, but there's a bit of texture. Mm. It's a bit crunchy as well because there's slightly charred bits on the hot plate. It goes great with the garlic rice because like you said, there's no garlic in the in the dish. It's a lot of onions, but like no garlic at all. Is there pork crackling as well? Or, so, or like some sort of pork skin? They added pork crackling. Ah, that's what it is. But it's super like the most traditional so sisig doesn't work. It's just made of pork oil. And do you usually add lemon as well? Yes. Cuts through the richness. Now we're on to our last dish. The beef kare kare. Did I say that right? That can be a thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like eat a eat a bite and then add I'll in? Try it out first, so you okay. see if, um, like why you bubble on with it. It's very peanutty. It's, uh, a lot of texture, but it lacks like complexity at the moment. It's like missing something. Yeah. Now you try to the bubble on. So you the rice, the sauce, a bit of meat if you want, whatever. But... There you go. Right. I see what you mean. It like lifts the flavors. All right, for dessert, we have halo halo, which is, which means mix mix. Yeah. <laughs> there is, there are cornflakes, there's ube ice cream, there is evaporated milk. There's lachu pan in there too. I think there could be some red beans in there too. Okay, we shall find out. You know why I love it? Because there's so many different textures and there's like different flavors as well. It's like a kinder surprise. You don't know what your next bite's gonna be. All right, we are going to finish the rest of this dessert. That is pretty much it for this segment. Uh, I'll put all the details of this restaurant in my description. So yeah. If you've watched my videos for a while now, you will know that I started cooking a lot more during lockdown, 
but I've mostly stuck to dishes that I know or dishes that I ate growing up. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I have partnered up with Barrier Fiesta to cook a couple Filipino dishes. We're gonna be making pork binagongan and also Filipino fried chicken. If you've never heard of Barrier Fiesta before, they are a household national brand in the Philippines and their products make it super easy to make authentic Filipino dishes at home. So the dish that I'm making today is essentially pork with shrimp paste. I'm using pork belly. I tried making this a few times prior and it's actually a lot easier to make than I thought it would be. And it tastes really, really good with rice. So that's already earned extra points in my books. So Barrio Fiesta has three different shrimp paste to choose from. They have spicy, regular, and sweet. Shrimp paste is a key ingredient to this dish. It's made of fermented tiny shrimp that gives like a strong umami, seafoody saltiness and slight sweetness to the dishes. It doesn't really work if you like have it on its own, but when you add it to a dish, it adds like a depth of umami flavor. I tried it with fried rice and it's really, really good. So what we will need for this dish is tomato, onion, garlic, pork belly, shrimp paste, of course, eggplant, vinegar, and some rice, because this goes really, really well with rice. All right, first thing we gotta do is to lightly fry up the eggplant. Maybe like two to three minutes and then we take it back out. So this is what we're adding. This would go so well with fried rice. Okay, uh, now we just add the lid on, put it on really low heat and let it simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes. And that's pretty much it, it smells really good. Um, in the time that we're waiting for this to cook, we are also gonna be making fried chicken. And to make this, I am going to be using Crispy Joy breading mix. There is a spicy version and there's also a non-spicy version. I'm gonna be using the non-spicy version today. Dungeon! <laughs> My brother's arrived. <laughs> hello, 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 how hungry are you? Yeah. Okay, well, it's pretty much done. My hair's not fixed. And my it doesn't matter, you look the same good. regardless. All right, for dinner tonight, we have uh, fried chicken and we also have pork with shrimp paste. And I'm joined by my favorite brother. You can tell me what you think. Okay, what is this dish? This is shrimp paste with pork belly. It's got tomato, onion, garlic, and eggplant. In the shrimp paste or in this? How much is there left? You just have as much as you can. You didn't trim the fat. I did. I'm 81 kilos. <laughs> there's, an, there's more rice. You got it in Galois. Mm. That's really good. Yeah? Yeah. What's in the sauce? It's the shrimp paste, the sponsor. I, I actually taste tested a little bit already and I thought it was really, really good. But I will taste test it for the camera as well. Yeah, it's really good. It's savory, it's umami. And then it's like, it's got a bit of like citrusy flavor from the tomato. Hold up the packet. It's 
crispy and it brings me joy. <laughs> This honestly goes so well with rice and my brother seems to approve as well. If you want to give this a go, I've linked the recipe in my description and also details on where you can find Barrier Fiesta products here in Sydney. I am currently in Auburn, reason being I am about to check out the Botanic Gardens, uh, the Cherry Blossom Festival. I think it's what it's called. I've already booked my tickets online. You need to book tickets online before you get into it. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to check it out and see what it's all about. I think there's like lots of food there available as well. So I'm excited. My stomach is half empty, just in case like I don't see anything that I want, but also if there are things I want, I have space to consume it. All right. There is quite a number of people here. It looks, I had a very, very small glimpse of it as I was walking in. It looks beautiful. I have actually never been to Japan during cherry blossom season. That is absolutely like one of the things that's on my bucket list of to-dos. It is really, really beautiful. There are a lot of people over there looking to take photos. I'll see if I can get some nice shots for you so you can see what I'm looking at right now. Look, this is what I'm talking about. It's very pretty. Okay, this is my last attempt to get me with the cherry blossoms. There was a lot of people, but I still really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm just done with the cherry blossom trail. I think this is the line for food. I'm not 100% so sure. I just see like a huge line of people. I asked the people in front of me whether they're lining up for food. They said yes. So yeah, I guess we'll find out what food is available here. I'm actually getting a little bit hungry, so. I'm probably gonna get something. I was wrong, that line was not the line for food, it was the line for the cherry blossoms again, so I have left. Okay, so once I got here, I saw the food options and I couldn't resist getting something. I got myself a pineapple iced tea and I also got satay chicken with rice from Satay Brothers and then once I walked around the corner to find a seat I realized there are actually four more stores that I didn't even see and the food there looks pretty appetizing as well there is the omu rice onigiris takoyakis as well mm, chicken satay is more like bites of chicken I gravitated towards this because there's rice There's something about Muji stationery that makes me just like completely obsessed with it. Like this set of notebooks, it's five dollars and there's five of them. So it's a dollar for each notebook and the paper is so smooth and so nice to write on. hasn't really changed. It's still just as I remember it. I have been debating whether to get a Kindle for the longest time, but like I understand the appeal because you can have like so many books just in a little device, but there's something really nice about turning the pages that you just can't get with a Kindle, which is why I haven't bought one yet. But I am looking for a book. We're at Dimex. Dimex or Dimex, how do you say it? Anyway, I'm at Dimex and I'm gonna see if the book that I'm looking to buy is here. Do 
This is the perfect book for me. I feel like people that come up with titles for books would be great at coming up with titles for YouTube videos because I see this and I'm like, what? What hasn't nobody told you before? ended up at Dirty Pita and I've ordered the same thing I always order so you know how their noodles have different levels like zero to seven I got the nursery one because I can't handle anything more than one and there's also a salad the papaya salad which I've requested for no chili they have zero mild medium spicy and very spicy and we've chosen mild I mean sorry zero uh, my friend has got noodles as well, it looks very, very nice. If you've never tried Dirty Pattern before, I recommend you give it a go because I feel like their noodles never disappoint. Not me anyway. And that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Subscribe if you haven't already. I also have a monthly newsletter that's coming out soon it comes out every month and it's not really about food but more so like the behind the scenes of running this channel if you're interested i've linked it in my description yeah like this video if you liked it leave me a comment i love to read it thank you so much foodie monster for your comment last week having a quarter of a mooncake is fine unless i feel like if you're having looking to have like two or three mooncakes then like a quarter of each that is kind of pushing it but hey, it's only once a year, so... Anyway, thanks so much for watching till the end. New video every week, and I'll see you in my next video next week. Bye! You guys have given me many tips on how to cut onions. I think about it every time, and I'm like, I should have done that. I should have done that. Cut it last next time.